Okay, we have ourselves a race here, but we're going to get a turn one Harpling, turn two Settle. Hopefully we can push through this Itali. Once they start ramping, it's going to be uh, really tough to combat this guy unless we just need to get lucky here. Get some aggression out, pounding them. Arena, that should be nice to give us a few more cards to deal with their huge advantage. Tear asunder. We will probably be doing that on the Mind Stone. Because we want to slow them down. It's only plus one, but it's it can be it can make a huge difference. Turn four play would have been two lands potentially. It'll push intervention. And it's tapped. That's annoying, but. I want to use this here. So we have the mana open for cut down or fatal push. Just in case they go for some kind of mana dork. Once we get the worm cut engine out, I'll feel a bit better. Nylea makes their creatures cost one less. Dark ritual and a massacre worm. Well, we can just straight up go for... Now, the good thing about this is we're going to have a lot of aggression coming in soon. And because they're red-green... They're not going to be able to deal with all this stuff unless they get um, some kind of big wipe. Catch up Oasis. I mean, it's working out pretty well so far. So we're going to have lethal here. Down to eight. I'm going to leave up the heroic intervention just so we can get through next turn. Okay, so here comes Atali. What do they get? This could make all the difference. Oh god. So they're going to get to draw seven cards and put something into play and get Cultivate. That really does suck. That does suck. Okay, and we can't kill the Atali in response. So now they're going to put in something that's five mana or less. And that is concerning. That is concerning. Beanstalk Giant. But that's not a blocker. Okay. Uh, okay. Two mana up. What are they going to do? Abrade this? If they do abrade this, we're going to Heroic Intervention. So they're pretty just discarding to hand size. So we have to pretty much win now. Sack a desert, something that's plus three, plus three. Give the star of plus three, plus three. Sacrifice the desert. And that works out fine, I think. So that's going to be an eight, seven trample. So they have to block the Storev. And they just didn't block? Why didn't they block? Why didn't they block there? If they block the... They could have blocked that, traded, and then they would have taken... That doesn't have Death Touch. Um... Okay, fair enough. I'll take that. I'm very happy to take that. In the vast expanse, where the sands hold secrets and the spice weaves its magic, a singular deck rises from the dunes. Today, we're looking at Storev Dev Karim Lich, which is a deck inspired by Dune, and I can't wait to watch the second one, so I thought, let's try and make something... Uh, evoking the feeling. It's not going to be like my older ones, where I have kind of character for character... Essentially because it's pretty tough, unless I did a universe is beyond. 
I chose Storev because green and black does represent the dunes quite well and just there's it's just the color of the worms essentially and in the artwork there is a giant frigging worm in it I don't really know why but there is so some of the coolest cards referencing the film we had to have an ornithopter that's a definite now I would have had the original one which is the zero mana dude but it just doesn't do anything in the deck so I went for the ornithopter of paradise so there's that obviously we've got some deserts here sun scorched desert We've got If Near Deadlands, Desert of the Glorified, a few of those. And the Pierce de Resistance, you have to have a Sandworm Convergence. This is actually pretty epic. It feels like a Planeswalker as well. It creates five fives each turn. Flyers can't attack your walkers you control. Pretty cool. We've got a lot of other worms. We've got Bookworm, Palaka Worm, Sifter Worm, Purple Worm, which is the only worm spelt with an O in the entire game. Reason. It's from D&D. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. This is a pretty exciting worm. We have a worm called Engine. And Chefnet Monitor is not a worm, but it does mention Deserts, Massacre Worm, and a few other worms as well. So it's pretty cool. It's a very wormy deck. Hugely inspired by Dune and my love of Dune. Dune is the, the first Dune remake. is definitely one of my favorite sci-fi films of all time. So the deck wants to put stuff into the graveyard. There's a bit of a surveil sub-theme here because when a star of hits, you get to return a creature walker from your graveyard that wasn't put there this turn. So it cares about the past, which is interesting design. We don't really have cards that reference the past, mostly the present, which is interesting. Um, or should I say it doesn't synergize with the present. That's probably more accurate. But yeah, let's see how the deck goes. It's definitely a lot of fun. And in testing, it actually works quite well for a theme deck. And I hope you enjoy celebrating the release of Dune 2 with me as well. I really can't wait to see that movie. I'm really excited. Okay, so it's pretty rare that we face this Kozilek, so at least it's something a bit interesting. We don't really have any small spells, so that could be that could be an issue. But at least the Evoke Despair does get rid of the Kozilek eventually. Sift a worm. That's going to take some time to get there. Lots of lands coming in tapped. So we don't have any plays till next turn, sadly, but yeah. Flash Gorgeous could be good. A 3-3. Three, three. It's decent. And then, obviously, if it dies, we can potentially get it back with the Star of. But given that they're colorless, it's hard to say how much removal they, they really have. This is so push. Menace and lifelink. But yeah, once we get to six mana, it should be game over. Let's see. They didn't attack, which is obvious because they couldn't have got through. So now we get to swing back. Essentially, we want some lands. Lands will be good. Sword of Once and Future is pretty sick as well. If we can equip that to the Flash Gorger, we'll be dealing five damage. We'll be... Uh, Playing spells from the graveyard, including Signing Blood. Mastery Shaper. So they can crew that if they really want to. Let's just get rid of it now. So they get to transmogrify this into another spell, basically. Real top card. If it's permanent with mana value three or less. Put it into play. It's pretty good. Oh, they just ramped. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. At least they can't crew that. Death Sprout, protection from Michael. And of course it is. If I had five mana there, I would have been tempted to go for the sword and equip it. But I, I just kind of hate playing swords without equipping them in the same turn because you're kind of giving away a lot of information. If this resolves, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Three, four, five, six, seven. They're not even. They're not even that far off from casting it. Ornithopter. Yikes. Even more ramp. The fact they can just place off at the top is crazy as well. When you consider they've got stuff like Portal to Phyrexia. Um, and we are just missing land drops. It, it really does suck. Sculpting steel. Another cold steel heart. Okay. 
Okay. We are desperate here. So we're going to use the death sprout on this to get a land. Now it does have protection from multicolored, but trample does. Actually, if we do this, do this. It can't block very easily. Down to 10. So they could be dead next turn because we've got the sword. So they don't have any other forms of blocking, then yeah, we could just kill them. Key to the archive. Yeah, they might just be dead. Unless I've got some kind of blocker, some kind of removal. One, two, three, four mana. What could they possibly do? Yeah, they're definitely dead then, really. What I mean, two mana now. Inventor's Fair is pretty close race, though. Down to nine. Jeez. Yeah, that would have been scary to resolve that. But we had Menace and Trample anyway, so... Whew, that was intense. Pretty removal heavy hand. Let's give this a go. We are facing one of the most obnoxious Bant Commanders ever made. But let's be honest... It's just every deck these days, isn't it? Every deck I face is obnoxious people. If you have a room of 100 people and it starts off with 50 nice people and 50 horrible people, eventually the nice people will just get fed up with the shit that the horrible people give them, so the nice people will leave the room. That's probably the nicest analogy I can think of any online gaming server. You know, there's going to be only so much that a nice person can take before they leave. Now... I think I'm a nice person. Um, so I must be one of the anomalies here that is just kind of staying. And I don't really know why sometimes, but there you go. I want to bring you content. I want to bring you good Nobody content. If that means... 15 through hundreds of painful decks, then so be it. Because I want to bring you fun content. I want to give people a reason to just still try and have hope and enjoy the game. It's difficult. It's very difficult. Hmm, especially when... When... What are they, they're not even doing anything. It's kind of strange. Um, yeah, I'll get rid of the Putrefy here. We all have things they could have played the Cura, but they discarded it. Oh no, Junior Tatches. What is... What's going on here? Just completely, um, taking out your lane player. I... You know what? It's a very powerful deck. And I don't really enjoy facing it, so I'll just take that win. But yeah, be wary if you see this. It's not going to end well a lot of the time. Cool hand, bro. Okay. Ornithop to removal. Value. Removal. Sweet. Pentalaza. Well, that's something we we don't see very often, isn't it, guys? Okay, so Shape of Century. Put in the bin. Probably just want some more lands, really. Want to get to the big worms. Get the worms out. Get the worms out, get the ornithopter out. It's all good. It's all good. I can't get over the fact that this looks like a toy duck. <laughs> it looks like a toy duck. My son has a little yellow duck that looks a bit like this. It doesn't have the massive wings, but yeah. Okay. I guess we'll go for the glisser. Oh, I love how this is a dual type surveil land. It's so sick. It means that comes in untapped. It means we can get for the armor elves. It's tremendous. Now, how many. Board wipes is Pantlaza going to have? I don't know. Spike Field Hazard. Wow, they used a a land MDFC to kill one of the ones. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. But we already have Glisser. Glisser's good enough for me. Fable of La Mirabracare. Now, here's, here's the thing. We're probably just going to kill the Fable here. Get rid of that silly 2-2. Two -two. Desmond 2-2. Two -two. Swinging with a glisser. Boom. And destroy the sagas. It's interesting the flavor of glisser, right? Is it that she has a magic eraser and she's rubbing out the archives of what happened? She's destroying sagas. She erases your history. You know, that's kind of sweet, right? I never thought of it that way. It's pretty cool. Okay, we're facing probably the most boring deck that's ever been made. Um, it's a deck in which people just mulligan all day long until they find that one non-land card they have in the deck. And then they can't play it until turn four. And they've just multi two. So, I mean, why do people play this? Why? It's terrible. 
It's such a terrible deck, and I like memes, but it's it just sucks. It just sucks. Because as soon as we kill Lelia, that is it. That is that is it. Well, I hope they enjoy casting Lelia because that will be the last time. Why do people make this? <laughs> oh, it's so terrible and boring. It's so terrible and boring. Let's make her. No, that's just passive aggressive. No, I'm not. No, I don't want to attack. I want to make a food. Okay, thank you. Thank you, use. So yeah, Lelio. One non-land permanent in the whole deck. Pretty sure it probably is that as well in the hand. Wooden Symmetry. And then if we go for a blocker, um, then how do they... How do they do anything? How do they win? This becomes a 3-3, yes, but then what? Okay, so that, that was it. Okay, that was it. Um, I guess we'll just, just fly over the top then. Because yes, they can make this huge, but they don't have trample. So, what what is it going to do? So they're going to cascade. Oh, there's, there's actually other spells now. Okay. Plus three, plus three. I mean, okay, you have to trample, but I'm just gonna just gonna blow it up then. So, discover three. There's nothing to discover. It just shuffles the deck. So now it just has haste. Twenty nine, twenty nine. Okay. So that's the deck. So we just have to block this until the end of time now. That's pretty big, though. I'm, I'm just glad that we just sped up the, uh, the triggers. Oh, no. Slow down again. Sweet. Sounds like a laser machine gun. Okay, so we definitely have to block. That's a certainty. Move to the command zone. Okay, okay. Right. Swing over the top, see what we can get. So we get a removal spell or two, then we just win, right? That's all we need. One removal spell. Well, cut down ain't ever going to work. That's that's for sure. Go for Palaka Worm here. Okay, so we're going to have to blocks again, but there's no removal in the deck. This is just this is just it. And as long, as I said, as long as we have a blocker every single turn and maybe get rid of the trump trumpeting dinosaur thing, we should be okay. Mythopter. Okay. Price of fame. I mean, there we go. We've just found a removal spell. And uh, that's pretty much it, isn't it? That's just the game. That's that's the game, guys. Savelle 1, Cavern of Souls. Price of fame. Kill it. <laughs> Is this fun? Is it fun to have a deck with like two, three, so it's three cards, is it? God knows. Starving Revenant. Surveil. Put that. And yeah, okay. Over to them. Here comes Lelia again. Okay. Just, okay. <laughs> it's really incessant, isn't it? It really is incessant. I mean, they're not quitting. They're still not quitting. I mean, dude. <laughs> what? I just, whatever. Whatever. I just, I don't get the community, man. I just don't get it. Okay, so how did that go? So, in the background, I had quite a lot of games, and to be honest, I've got a bit of a headache now because 
I've faced so many high tier decks and it's just painful. Um, the matchups for this felt really ridiculous considering I'm playing a meme deck, really, to be honest. Look at all these big worm drops. You know, it's going to be tough to cast these. Yeah, so if you do make this for lols, for fun, you will face nightmarish builds. I suppose that's normal and par for the course. Um, how do I like the deck? I actually think it's really fun, but it just needs room to breathe just like any theme build it's it's really difficult these days to make theme builds compared to when i first started the channel three years ago back then the player base was less sweaty less cutthroat and you could just have a bit more fun making stuff so that's why there's been a decline of kind of theme builds it, it does work pretty well i mean even without getting creatures back from your graveyard the body of this is sick five four trample is actually really nice with these swords because the trample just means you can do the combat damage, which is exactly what you want to do to trigger these swords. So it works pretty well. I think where the deck falls short is, sadly, just the nature of the theme. Worms are huge. Worms are so hard to get out. Seven mana, eight mana. You know, worm conversion, this is probably the best one. It's not even a worm, but it does make worms. There are ways to make them cheaper, obviously. We've got Nullia to make creatures one less to cast. Garrett can perpetually do that as well. Worn Power Stone gives plus two. Cultivate plus one. Worn Thop Turn, the rest of them give you plus one. Maybe it needs more ramp, but it definitely needs either work or just changing the theme to make it uh, a good kind of build. The Commander, independent of the theme, I do like it. I think it's probably better as a finisher so a hugely well a, a more aggressive curve maybe start with the, the the high end we've got you know five six seven eight nine drops here that just make it super difficult to be aggressive i think this wants to be aggressive because it even the clue is that the fact that he wants to deal damage when a card says deal damage you should probably follow those steps in order to do to to do that to get the synergy but yeah um it's 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 tricky I want to make fun theme decks like this, and Dune is such a cool property. Um, yeah, it's 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 hard. It's a bit sad. It's a bit sad when things don't do well. But yeah, I lost a lot of games, maybe fifty to sixty percent. You saw the fun ones, and you have the problem where when you are winning, people quit, and then sometimes you're just getting stomped. So either end of the spectrum isn't very good. It's a rare time when I didn't really get a good long game, like fifteen minute games. They're, they're my favorites. I think they're your favorite as well. But yeah. Maybe you can tweak it and tell me how you change it. What do you think? Um, give it a go. Check this in the description below. You can support the channel by becoming a channel patron. You get a free custom video if you become a channel patron. And if you want to donate to the channel, you can via ko-fi.com. Details there as well. You can donate a one-off amount, enough to buy me a coffee, a ticket to the cinema, anything, anything you think to support the channel. Because, uh, yeah. YouTube doesn't pay very well, but until next time, watch another one of my videos, support me that way as well. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.